Good afternoon, grade 12 learners, viewers and educators. I'm Manoy Munso. I'm here to revise all the topics which are expected to be done in the first term with you in preparation for the formal test that you are going to write before the end of the term. Please take note that there is no longer an essay in a formal test. It has been removed. So the format of the paper is as follows. It has a section A. In section A, you get short answer questions, such as multiple choice, terminology, and the matching items. So section B, you get a variety of questions. Without any waste of time, let us get started. Molecules. So there are two types of molecules. We have the organic molecules and the inorganic molecules. So now the molecules, the, the molecules are the building blocks of the cells. I'll start first with the organic molecules. They are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then we have those organic molecules which have elements such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Organic molecules are produced by living organisms. Examples are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, and vitamins. Coming to the inorganic molecules, they don't have the element carbon. If they do have it, they lack hydrogen. So examples of the inorganic uh, molecules are water, minerals, like uh, sodium, iron, iodine, magnesium, you name them. Inorganic molecules are also used in agriculture as fertilizers. So let us start with the carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So the building blocks of the carbohydrates are the monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are simple sugars, which we normally call it a glucose. So here we need to know that there are three different types of the carbohydrates. We have the monosaccharides, disaccharides, and the polysaccharides. So what are the examples of the monosaccharides? Remember, mono means one. Saccharide means sugar. So the three types of the monosaccharides, or the three examples of the monosaccharides, are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Disaccharides, they are made up of two sugar molecules. They are maltose, lactose, and sucrose. Polysaccharides, they are made up of more than two sugar molecules. They are starch, cellulose, and glycogen. So here I have a sucrose as an example of a disaccharide. So now where do we get a sucrose? Okay, we can get it from a sweet or from the table sugar that we use at home. So now this sucrose consists of two glucose molecules, which are glucose and fructose. And then here I have another example of a disaccharide. It's made up of two glucose molecules. Okay, we get lactose from milk. So the two 
glucose molecules are the two simple sugar molecules which form a lactose, a glucose, and galactose. So the last type of a disaccharide is maltose. So maltose is also made up of two sugar, two sugars. So now the two sugars are glucose and glucose. We get maltose from maltabella. And then from there we have an example of a starch as a polysaccharide. As you can see, it is made up of more than two sugar molecules. The sugar molecules here are many. So this is a, it's a polysaccharide. So remember I said examples are starch, cellulose, and glycogen. Coming to the functions of the carbohydrates, they store energy. So glucose is stored in plants as starch, and then glucose is stored in animals as glycogen. Apart from storing energy, they provide us with energy during cellular respiration. So coming to the food test, how to test for the presence of starch and glucose. So I'll start first with the test for starch. If we want to know if a sample contains starch, we use a chemical which is called iodine. So iodine is yellowish brown in color. So in the presence of a foodstuff that has starch, it will change to a blue or black color, as you can see here. So here I have a test tube. Inside there is plain water. So a few drops of iodine, they have been added. So as you can see, there is no color change. But here, where there is touch, there is color change. So now the first apparatus where a uh, starch is not present is called the control. So now the aim of the control will be to compare the results. Coming to the test for glucose. So now to test for glucose, we use a chemical or a reagent which is called Benedict solution. So now this Benedict solution is blue in color. So if a sample contains little sugar, this blue Benedict solution will be green in color. If a sample that contains a glucose, glucose there is found in moderate uh, amounts, then blue Benedict solution will be orange in color. So if the material that we are testing has a lot of glucose, so blue Benedict solution will turn to a brick red color. So here it's a food sample that has glucose and the blue Benedict solution is added. So in order for you to get a, the expected results, you must make it a point that you heat a, the mixture. So now at first, this a blue Benedict solution will change to a green color. From there, it will go to a yellow color. After a yellow color, you will experience a, a, a color which is closer to a red color. And then from there, you get a, a, a brick red color. 
So now you can say this color is orange. Coming to the lipids. Lipids are fats and oils. So now the building blocks of the lipids, it's one classic oil and three fatty acids. Here I have a structure of a fat molecule. It has one classic oil and three fatty acids molecules. So lipids are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And then the, hydro the, the ratio of the hydrogen to the oxygen atoms is greater than two is to one. So there are two types of fats. We have the saturated and the unsaturated. So I'll start first with uh, the saturated fatty acids. As you can see that uh, you only see one bond between the carbon atoms. But when we go to the unsaturated fats, you see a double bond between uh, the carbon uh, atoms. But this molecular uh, formula is not important. Coming to the difference between saturated fats and unsaturated fats. So we get saturated fats in meat, butter, dairy products. Unsaturated, we get uh, unsaturated fats in vegetable oils, such as olive oil or sunflower. So saturated fats are solid at room temperature. And then the unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature. So saturated uh, fats produce bad cholesterol, while unsaturated fats produce good cholesterol. Uses of lipids or fats. They store energy, they absorb nutrients such as vitamin A and D. They provide water just like a, 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 in a camel, that hemp, that, that the fat in the hemp is broken down, in the hemp is broken down to water uh, in the condition of drought. So how do we test uh, for, for fats? So we use a reagent which is called alcohol. So if we don't want to make use of alcohol, you can make use of ether or ethanol. So you take any material that has a fat in it, so here we have cooking oil. So when you pour it on a filter paper, so you will see a greasy spot. That greasy spot, uh, it's an indication that uh, fat is present uh, in oil. So here, when you pour water, you won't be able to see any spot as water doesn't uh, have fat. Coming to the proteins, the building blocks are the amino acids. So these are the amino acids. Two amino acids are called a dipeptide. So many amino acids, as you can see here, they are called a polypeptide. So now here you can see the bonds. So now the bonds between the amino acids, they are called the peptide bonds. So in order for a protein to be formed, 50 or more amino acids are required. Coming to the properties of proteins, they are made up of the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. There are those, again, that contain sulfur, phosphorus, and iron. So proteins are sensitive to pH and temperature. Higher temperature and the fluctuation in pH, they cause the, the proteins to be denatured. So higher salt also, uh, concentration, again, has an effect on the, on the proteins. So what we need to know here, again, is that enzymes are also proteins. Uses of proteins, they are source of energy. 
They are the source of the amino acids. They speed up uh, the rate of chemical reactions, just like enzymes. Some of them, okay, are antibodies, and then they provide immunity uh, to our bodies. Testing for a protein. So when we test if a sample contains a protein, we use a, a biuret a solution. So biuret solution uh, is, pre is prepared using copper sulfate and sodium hydroxide. In color, it is blue. So if a food sample contains a protein, just like the white part of an egg, for an example, uh, the blue color will turn to a violet color. So if we don't make use of the biuret, we can make use of Milon's uh, reagent. It is uh, colorless. So in the presence of a foodstuff that has a protein, it turns to a red or a pink color. Remember we said enzymes uh, are proteins. So enzymes are very important as they act as organic uh, catalyst. They speed up uh, chemical reactions in our cells, such as anabolism and catabolism. So what is important about them is that they don't get used up in a chemical reaction. They usually have uh, the, suffix, the suffix ASE. So when they build up molecules, that is called anabol uh, uh, anabolism. And then when they break up uh, molecules in chemical reactions, uh, that is called catabolism. They are substrate specific. So factors that affect enzyme actions, it's pH and temperature. Low pH causes the enzymes to denature. And high pH, again, causes the enzymes to denature. So uh, the enzymes work well when the, uh, the pH is optimum. Temperature, low temperature makes the enzymes to be inactive. And then high temperature makes the enzymes to be denatured. So in order for them to work, they need optimum temperature or maximum temperature. So coming to the lock and the key theory. So enzymes work in the same way as a lock and a key. So a key, it's a substrate, and a lock, it's an enzyme. So when a key is fitted into a lock, we get the lock and the key complex. Here, we have an enzyme, which is a lock, and then we have a substrate that uh, fits into this, into this enzyme through this side of an enzyme, which is called the active site to form what is called an enzyme substrate complex. So now here I have an example. I have an example of a carbohydrate here. It's sucrose. Here I have an, uh, an, uh, an enzyme. So now that here we have sucrose, the name of the enzyme here will be sucrase. Remember I said enzymes are specific. And then this will be the active site of an enzyme where a, a substrate is going to fit to form what is called an enzyme substrate a, a complex. Here, an enzyme is going to exert a pressure on a substrate so as to break the bonds using water. And then what is going to happen is that a product will be formed. So a product which is going to be formed here in the case of 
uh, sucrose will be fructose and galactose. So now these are the products. So now here is the enzyme. Can you see that this enzyme hasn't changed? So it can be used over and over. So if the temperature is too high, the shape of the enzyme is going to, to change. Meaning that the active size, uh, the active site is the one which is going uh, to change. Again, fluctuation in what now in pH again will cause the active site uh, to change. So if the active site uh, changes, it means the substrate is not going to fit here, so the enzyme will uh, fail to perform its function. Coming to the vitamins, they are needed for normal growth, development, the types of vitamins, we have A, uh, which forms pigments in our retina. Deficiency causes blindness. Vitamin B1, that converts carbohydrates to energy. Deficiency is very, very. Vitamin C, which plays a role in growth, in growth development, and repair of our body tissues. Deficiency is heavy. Vitamin D regulates a calcium level in the body. Deficiency rickets. Vitamin E, it, it, it plays a role as an antioxidant, meaning that uh, it destroys the bad chemicals in our cells. So last but not least, we have the nucleic acids. They are the building blocks of the nucleotides. We have two types, DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA, they make the proteins. Let us take a short break. Welcome back from a short break. So now we are going to talk about a microscope. So parts of a microscope. So now this is an eyepiece. That is where you put uh, your eye. And then here we have the objective lens. They are of different sizes. They play a role in magnifying an object. So these uh, objective lenses are attached to this piece which is rotating and it is called uh, the revolving nose piece. Another part, we have the cause adjustment knobs. So they are a function is to enable you to focus on an object. But for a more or for a clear focus, you make use of the fine adjustment knobs. Here we have a stage. It is on a stage where we put uh, our specimen. So the specimen is put on a, on a slide. And then to hold the slide, we use the clips and then we have a part here which is called the diaphragm. The function of the diaphragm is to control the amount of light that reaches the specimen. A diaphragm works like a, a door. If you want a, too much light to enter, you will open the door wide. But if you want less light uh, to enter, you will close it a little bit. And then from there we have the light source for providing uh, us with light. So coming to the calculations, so sometimes you'll be asked to calculate uh, the magnification. So when you are asked to calculate the magnification, you take the size of the eyepiece. They are of different sizes. You have an eyepiece which is of the size of 10. And then you are going to multiply that by the size of the objective lens. Objective lenses, as I said, they are of different sizes. So if this objective lens has the size of 10, so size of the specimen, 
And then we have magnification. So I have shown you how to calculate uh, the magnification. So if you want to calculate the image size, you hide it and then you will put your hand here and then you will say I is equals to uh, A multiplied by M. And then if you want to calculate the actual size, you hide this with your hand and then you will say uh, A is equals to I over M. When you want to calculate the magnification here, you will say M is equals to I over A. So here I have a, an example of the square mass epithelial cells. So here we are calculating the actual size. Remember it's I over M. So I here is this uh, image size that you see here. Uh, it's 50 millimeters. And then the magnification is 1,200. From there, you'll say 50 divided by 1,200. You'll get 0 0,0416 millimeters. So now the unit, the unit for calculating the actual size, it's micrometers. So in order to convert millimeters to micrometers, that is the UM, we multiply by 1,000. So you will get 41,6. Okay, we are done with a microscope. Short break again. We'll come back. Welcome back to the revision lesson. Now we are going to talk about the last topic, plant and animal cells. So I'll start first with a plant cell. It has a cell wall. So it is an outside layer, so it serves to protect the inner contents of a cell. Below the cell wall, we have a cell membrane that encloses uh, the cytoplasm. The cell membrane is permeable. Uh, it allows certain substances to get into and out of the cell. So substances get here, can get into the cell by diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Another part, it's a vacuole. So now the vacuole is filled with a cell sap. Cell sap contains sugars and salts. So the main aim of a vacuole is to keep a cell firm, meaning that it provides a turgidity. If, a cell, if the cell sap can get out of uh, the vacuole, so now the whole cell will be flexed, mean that uh, the cell will collapse. So another part of a plant cell, it's a nucleus. So now the structure is a nucleus. So now the nucleus is covered by the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane has the pores to regulate uh, the entry and the exit of substances. It has the nucleolus, so which uh, produces the ribosomes. It has a fluid, which is called the nucleoplasm. So it is inside the nucleoplasm where phosphates and the sugars and the nitrogenous bases are floating. It, uh, it has uh, the chromatin uh, network. So, which transfers genetic material to the daughter cells. And then here we have the, the chloroplast. We know very well that chloroplasts play a role uh, in photosynthesis as they contain a green pigment, which is called a uh, chlorophyll. We have the mitochondria. They play a role in cellular respiration to release energy. And then connected to the cytoplasm, we have the endoplasmic reticulum. So now here we have two types. We have the rough ones. They are called the rough uh, endoplasmic reticulum. They carry the ribosomes. So now they make uh, proteins and transport them. And then here we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, 
they don't have the ribosomes, they play a role in the formation of, of fats. And then here we have a ribosome. It's a site for protein uh, a synthesis. We have the Golgi uh, apparatus or a Golgi body. So now these tubes, they pack the proteins and transport them to where they are needed in a cell. So cytoplasm, uh, it's a jelly-like or a fluid-like substance. So substances are circulating in it. Come into an animal cell. As you can see, it doesn't have a cell wall. It has the cell membrane. The structure which is new here, it's a lysosome. Uh, it carries the digestive enzymes. Apart from uh, secreting the digestive enzymes, uh, it destroys the viruses and bacteria. And then another structure which is new here, it's a centrosome. It contains the centrioles. So now centrioles, they produce spindle fibers. So now these spindle fibers, they attach the chromosomes. Coming to the differences between a plant cell and an animal cell. Plant cell is larger, animal cell is smaller. Cell wall is present, cell wall is absent. Plastids, like the chloroplast, are present. Here, they are absent. Coming to similarities, there is a cytoplasm. We also get a, the cytoplasm here. Mitochondria, we get mitochondria. Endoplasmic reticulum, we also get a, the endoplasmic a, reticulum here. Here they are. And then I said, cell membrane, cell membrane, cytoplasm, cytoplasm. So I don't think that I, I have left anything. So we are done with plant and animal cells. Let us take a short break again. Welcome back. Let us take some, some questions. So now the first question here says, it's a multiple choice question. It says, which one of the following is not a carbohydrate? Glycogen, it's a carbohydrate. Cellulose, it's a carbohydrate. Sucrose, it's a carbohydrate. C, it's glyceroil. So we know very well that we get glyceroil in fats. Coming to question 1.1.2, it's a graph which is based on the organic compounds of the tri beans. So here we have the proteins in beans, carbohydrates and lipids. So now the question says if dry beans form part of your diet, uh, of your diet, most part will be used as part of cuticles. Here you need to know the functions of the proteins. B, reserve energy source. C, waterproofing. D, building blocks of the hormones. Here, the correct answer, reserve energy source. So, meaning that B is the correct answer. 1.1.3 is based on a microscope. So, now the question says, lenses are located uh, in parts labeled. So, now when I was presenting, I said, the eyepiece, it's a lens. Objective uh, lenses are also lenses. So meaning that lenses are located in which parts? One, four, one and four, one and two, two and four, three and four. Okay, eyepiece is one, objectives is two. So we get lenses in one end and two. 
So the correct answer is B. Coming to the biological terms. They are the biological catalysts. What are the biological catalysts? We said enzymes, they speed up the rate of chemical reactions. 1.2.2, the group of organic compounds including DNA and RNA, we said they are the nucleic acids. 1.2.3, the organelle responsible for protein synthesis, we said it's a ribosome. Matching items. Okay, here we have 1.3.1. .1. So now when, here when you write, you must present your answers as A only, B only, both A and B or none. So you don't have, you don't have to redraw the table or to write the statements. So 1.3.1, .1, gets develops due to a shortage of what? Calcium, A only. 1.3.2, selectively permeable membrane. Where do we get it? Cell wall, tonoplast, tonoplast. So the correct answer here is B. Deficiency disease that develops due to a lack of protein. A or B? Okay. The correct answer here is A. Quashio core. Goita is caused by lack of iodine. So it's not the correct answer. This question is based on the enzymes. So the first question says, on which substrate P, Q, or R will enzyme A work the best? Remember I said enzymes are substrate specific. So now this is our enzyme. And then this part is called the active site. It is where a substrate uh, fits. So let us have a look at P, Q, and R and see as to which one is going to fit here. So the substrate which is going to fit here will be what? Is it going to be P? Q, uh-uh, it's R. So R is the correct answer. Which characteristic of enzymes is illustrated in the diagram? Enzymes are substrate A specific. As I said, sucrase as an enzyme will always work on sucrose. 2.1.3, when an enzyme controlled reaction normally uh, takes place at 10 degrees Celsius, if this is the, the right temperature for it to work, how will the reaction be influenced by a rise in temperature up to 25 degrees Celsius? Remember I said that enzymes are sensitive to two things, temperature and pH. So if the temperature is high, the enzymes will denature. Explain your answer in 2.1.3. So here, the enzyme will be destroyed, meaning that it will lose its shape. The part which is going to, to change shape will be the active site. So a change in the shape of the active site will cause an enzyme not to function. So enzymes will be destroyed. Now here we have a table that presents the nutritional information so we have the nutrients, unit, per 100, kilo, per 100 kilogram, per 100 gram portions, and RDA in percentage, per 80 gram portion. So let us quickly take the questions. Question 2.2.1 says, which nutrient is necessary for good vision? 
The nutrient which is necessary for good vision is vitamin A, which deficiency will occur if a person is deficient of vitamin B1? The disease will be beriberi. So 2.2.3 says, if a person eats four slices of bread, calculate the protein intake in grams of the person. So two slices, we have 11%. If the slices are four, then you say 11% plus 11%, and then you'll get 22%. Question three, it's based on the food test. So here, a reagent, as you can see, it's iodine. Starch is present, blue-black. Here, Benedict solution. Uh, starch, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the food uh, sample is glucose, a brick red color. So let us take the questions, 3.1.1. Name the chemicals represented by one and two reagents. One, iodine, two, Benedict solution. Provide possible results for the reaction that can be seen at X. A brick red a color will be shown as an indication that the food sample tested here contains glucose. So the blue Benedict solution will turn to a brick red color. Study the organelles in plant and animal cells represented below. Which organelle is illustrated in the diagram above? The organelle is the mitochondrion. It has double membrane, as you can see. The inner membrane is folded to form the cristae. Provide the names for label 3. Okay, as I've said, is the cristae. So the last question says, what is the difference between plant and animal cells regarding the organelle named in 3.2.1? the mitochondria. What is the difference between plant and animal cell? Okay, in animal cells, there will be more mitochondria because we need more energy for movement. But in plant cell, the mitochondria will be few because plants are not moving. So, we have come to the end of our revision lesson. Thank you.